Okay, good afternoon. Uh, the title of today's presentation is Design Criteria for Circular Building. And this paper is co-authored uh, between um, Mohib al obaidi and myself, Shabi Atla. Well, as you can see, the presentation is based on six case studies that we uh, worked on to distill uh, criteria for circular buildings. The aim of this pr uh, presentation is to aim the European Commission in identifying design criteria for circular building to increase overall building services and ease to use of secondary materials uh, to improve the resource efficiency throughout the building life cycle. And the main research questions are, what are the design criteria for circular building design that can be used in an initial design stage by architects? and how to take into account regeneration and impact recovery in those criteria. Well, uh, the methodology is inspired by a previous public publication by Kutafava uh, that was published in 2020. I would uh, invite you to have a look at the study. We did first a systematic literature review of the building uh, circularity criteria, then we uh, created a pool of case studies and selected the most accessible case study uh, and finally, we started to apply uh, our own developed circularity audits with structured questionnaires for clients and designers of case studies. And finally, we came up with our set of criteria that we developed and validated so far. And again, I repeat, the study is still in an initial stage as part of a PhD uh, work of Mr. Mohit al -Obay. Well, what was this approach that we used in this uh, study? We had simply a pool of case study that we used. We applied uh, our circularity audits and structured interviews. And finally, we benefit from the synergies and validated that through visiting the building several times. Also, we based our uh, criteria based on existing uh, studies uh, found in the literature. There is a previous book and previous uh, work by Ferdena and by Atia. We based our way to audit the buildings, check the connections, are they dry connections or uh, um, soft chemical compounds, or gluing, and so on. And we went through the different uh, kind of uh, fixations in order to uh, make sure that the disassembly will be beneficial. And for sure, we consulted the literature that is available that is developed in Belgium under the OVAM, uh, the VUB lab, and other uh, research units in TU uh, Delft, for example. So this was a very extensive phase to check what was already there. And after that, we started to work on presenting uh, the, the, the results. Before presenting the results, I just need to point out that we focused on the construction systems, the envelope system, the spatial function and use, and the building material and product services. Well, when it comes to uh, the selected case study, um, as you can see, we have uh, uh, five case studies uh, selected that are located, uh, sorry, four case studies that are located in the Netherlands, Fokker 7.78 uh, distribution center close to Schiphol Airport by Tata Steel. We have the head centrum building in Westerlo, Belgium. The green offices is exceptionally in Switzerland. And we have Yuan Social Housing in Nijmegen, the Netherlands the circular pavilion Abian Amro in uh, the Netherlands, Amsterdam, and the circular retrofit lab VUB Brussels, Belgium. Those are the six case studies that we investigated and we managed to visit them and we applied our audit sheet that we used in order to check our criteria. Now, when we looked at the major uh, uh, indicators that we can vulgarize or that we can characterize after doing the review phase and the visit stage, we came up with four major criteria, namely the carbon footprint. And in this sense, we did our calculations for a period of 50 years to look at the embodied and the operational carbon uh, emitted uh, over this period. We checked the reused content of the overall building material based on our inventory and the bill and quantities were also helping. We checked where, what is the availability of version material, recycled material, reused material, and we even distinguished those three aspects from the salvaged material. And every time we had a, a calculation based with a functional unit in a kilogram of materials. The third criteria was focused on the disassembly potential and the longevity of the components. Uh, how can we disassemble the building? Are the fixations glued or bolted, knots, and so on? 
and we went in all the connection types to make sure how can we dismantle the facade, how can we dismantle the foundation, how can we dismantle the structure, the skeleton, and so on. And finally, we uh, went through uh, building design flexibility and function adaptation by doing scenarios over periods of 50 to 100 years to uh, change the use of the building and test different scenarios of use. So these are the four main criteria that we uh, uh, had. And here I am delighted to share with you these uh, initial results. As you can see, this is the radar graph that we use so far. It is limited to the four indicators. Uh, the higher the number here, this means it's positive, and the more it's closer to the center to the zero, it means it's a negative thing. So you can see that most buildings, they have a good carbon footprint uh, assessment, meaning they have low carbon emission, if not neutral or even positive. This is due to sequestration and the use of timber. The disassembly potential, we were surprised, is very high in most of the used projects, but unfortunately, the reuse content was very low, and also the ability to uh, adopt in the future to different uh, uses was also low in most investigated projects. And as you can see, I would assume the head Centrum was one of the most interesting projects regarding the performance. Well, coming to the conclusion of today's presentation, uh, in summary, uh, we highly recommend using the four criteria above and translate them into universal building design indicators. We are already working with two architectural firms in Belgium, and they found our tool very beneficial. They used it, they tested it, and they are already uh, using it to inform the decision making and to exclude or include uh, some design alternatives in their design process. So this is very interesting. Design teams and green public procurement uh, uh, authorities can select uh, simple variables from those four indicators and develop sub variables and measurement units and requirements that can be already uh, integrated and we should not uh, uh, claim that we invented the wheel we just made it more simple more clear and more uh, structured in relation and based on the literature that is existing and existing work of a lot of other researchers who developed indicators that are more calculated in a uh, quantitative way from there, it will be easy for government regulators and municipal authorities responsible for land use, urban planning, and building regulation to develop policies that can ensure products and materials remain in use as long as possible using secondary materials and regenerating natural systems. From here, I invite you to read the paper, and I thank you for your attention. This was the presentation of today on the design criteria for circular building. Thank you very much. I'm looking forward for the questions. Thank you very much.